the first day of the month of September. Amen. Amen. We have raced through the year till we're almost at fall. Amen. And of course we know after fall comes winter, and then after winter comes spring, and we do it all over again. Amen. Amen. Because of God's goodness. He's the one that dictates when we will have seasons, how long the seasons will be. There are people that will tell you that they have the scope that they can do that, but they're telling you a lie. Only thing we live by is what God says in his word. We come to hear his word today. We've been hearing it, and we've been living by it, and we're seeing it in action. Isn't it wonderful to be able to see it in action? Not just to guess about it. I don't have to guess about what month it is. I know what month it is. I don't have to guess about where we are. Only thing I have to do is take my hand and, and I know we're here in Beargrass Missionary Baptist Church. And we know that all things that are done only can be done by what the Lord allows. He knows our sorrows. He knows our worries. He knows our concerns in all kinds of ways. And we're here to thank him for it. We come to worship him. We didn't come here to show off clothes. We did not come here to show off cars. We did not come here to talk about how wonderful we have it because we do such and such. We do nothing. It is God that does it all. And if you don't believe it, just stop living and see what happens. We want to be in his presence. We want to hear what he has to say. We want to live by him. Because it's the best way. So with these words, let us go to worship.
If you have your Bibles, please turn to the Gospel according to John, chapter 14. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. And once you have it, if you're able, please stand. Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that shall I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. John chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. Let us bow in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you for being God all by yourself, Heavenly Father. We thank you and praise you for all you have done for us. You didn't have to do anything. Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking up this morning, clothed in the right man, reasonable portion of health and strength, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for all the things that you do. And some of us don't even say thank you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this church as a whole, Heavenly Father. Each member, one by one, from the pulpit to the parking lot, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our pastor, his wife by his side. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the things that you do. Heavenly Father, lead us, guide us, strengthen us. Bless Louisville, Kentucky, Heavenly Father. You know what's going on, you know how to handle each and everything that is going on, Heavenly Father. And you will take care of it in your own time, but we have to get closer to you before it's everlasting too late, Heavenly Father. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for all the things that you do, Heavenly Father, because you didn't have to do anything for us. But we thank you and we praise you for everything. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless this country as a whole. Bless each and every person in this country, Heavenly Father, and surrounding countries, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you please to just guide us, strengthen us all. Heavenly Father, have mercy on people that have evil ways, Heavenly Father. Let us have a smile on our face. Let us bring people to Christ before it's everlasting too late and stop frowning up and looking all ugly because God is the first thing in our life and he's the only thing in our life, Heavenly Father. And thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning and all of God's people said 
Amen. We thank God for your presence in this place today. We're delighted that God continues to move upon our hearts that we see the sense, the common sense, to come to the house of prayer and tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. Amen. That's just common sense. Amen. The, the reality is that folk don't have to be nice, and when they are nice, they don't have to be nice to you. And the least you can do is say thank you. Well, if you feel that way about people being nice, you ought to feel double about God being nice. Amen. And you ought to come on and tell, tell God thank you. Come on now. If he's been good to you, you ought to just go ahead and tell him thank you. Come on. Don't fool me now. Come on. If, if God has blessed your entire life, come on and tell the Lord thank you. Amen. We appreciate again your presence here. Let us just be mindful of uh, uh, this up and coming uh, election in November. If you are not registered, we want to encourage you to register so that you can vote. This is an important vote that is coming up this November, November the 5th. And you need to cast your vote. Your vote does matter. Amen. Amen. Your vote does matter. So let's make sure. Let's make sure. And, and I, I like the possibilities of history making. Okay, y'all didn't catch that. Okay, I said I, I like the possibility of history making. For this country has never had a woman to sit in that seat, much less a woman of color to sit in that seat. And I like the idea of making history, amen. Y'all take that for what it's worth, amen. Take it for what it's worth, a, a, amen. Uh, also, we want to tell you to be careful. Tomorrow's a holiday. Enjoy yourself, enjoy your family. But be careful, our city is in rage. And it used to be if you didn't bother nobody, would nobody bother you. But that's not the case that we deal with today. Amen. Amen. So you got to keep your head on swivel, watch your back, and make sure that you don't, if any way possible, put yourself in a position uh, for harm's way to come your way. Amen. Amen. We just want to thank God for birthdays. Amen. 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 Our own brother Walter Colvin is celebrating a birthday. Amen. 61 years. Amen. Come on. Give it up for Walter and 61 years. Amen. That bad brother on the base. Amen. Come on. He can do the doggone thing, can't he? Amen. Amen. We thank God. For that, let us keep our sick and set in and our prayers. Sister Joan Hughes, we want to continue to keep her lifted. Uh, Mother Sonna Mae Clayton, we want to continue to keep her lifted. Brother Jesse Lane, we want to continue to keep him lifted. And certainly Reverend Dave Dow, we want to continue to keep him lifted in our prayers. Amen? Amen. The family is going through right now, so let's... Let's keep them. Let's keep them. I was with them uh, earlier this week, so let's keep them in our in our prayers. Amen. We have some other announcements. Also on this Wednesday, I think it's the fourth. Sister Tammy Lane will be celebrating another year of blessing. Amen. 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 Come on and give God some praise for 365 days. Amen. Come on. That's worth celebrating. That's worth celebrating. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Won't he do it? Amen. 
Amen. All right. We just appreciate. We thank God to see Reverend Keith Williams. Amen. He had Amen. surgery this week and uh, came through well. And if you know anything at all about Brother Keith and Sister Linda Williams, if they can be here, they're going to be here. Regardless of the situation, we're delighted, Reverend Williams, to see you in the house today, amen, and we thank God for you and your commitment, and come on, help me praise God for this heavenly bound band, amen, to God be the glory for these brothers who can do what they do, amen. All right, I think that's everything that I have, so come on, praise team.
I can take it with Jesus. I can take it with Him. I know I can stand with Him. I know I can stand. No matter what. No matter what. Give God some praise if your life is in his hands. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Is anybody in here glad about the fact that your life is in his hands? No matter what. Come on, no matter what. That says it all right there by itself. No matter what may come my way, my life is in his hands. Come on, it ought to be that. That ought to be something to shout about. My life is in your hands. Let's go back to the chorus. I know that I can make it. I know that I can make it. I Come know up. that I can stand. I know that I can stand. No matter what, no matter what may come my way. My life, my life is in. With Jesus, I can take it. With Jesus, I with Jesus, I can take it. With him I know I can stand. No matter what may come. No matter what may come my way. No matter what. No matter what may come my way. No matter what. No matter what may come. No matter what. No matter what. No matter what comes. I know that God's got it. No matter what, no matter what, it can be sickness, it can be diseases. No matter what comes my way, I know that God's got it. Say, God's got it. God's got it. It's all in His hands. My life is in Your hands. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. We honor God. We praise him. We lift his most holy and righteous name. If you have your Bibles, make your way again to the gospel according to John chapter 14. John's gospel chapter 14. John's gospel chapter 14. When you find it, say, I got it. If you don't have it, say, I'm looking for it. John's Gospel, chapter 14. I want to begin reading at verse number 16. And uh, I'm going to read down through verse 21 and then pick it up at verse number 27 and catch verse number 28. Amen beginning at verse number 16. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If you have a different Bible, the words might be slightly different, but the meaning and the message is the same. We find these words. 
and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you a little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will live also. At that day you will know that I am in the Father and you in me and I in you. Verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Jump down to verse number 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father. For my Father is greater than I. That's enough. Pray with me. God, how we love you so much. How we appreciate you. How, God, we magnify your most holy and righteous name. We come now, God, praying that you would grip us, grab us, hold us, hug us. Rock us in the cradle of your arms, even to the point that we can lay our head upon your chest and feel and hear the beat of your heart. We pray, as always, God, that you would bind the devil right now. Don't allow him to interfere nor interrupt with this time that you have preordained for us to be together. And God, if we have anything in our hearts that should not be there, I pray that you would move it as far as the east is from the west. And then God, give me your preacher what I need for this preaching moment. We ask it all in the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> For just a few moments this morning, I want to talk to us from the thought, and he walks with me. And he walks with me. On a jury day in March in the year 1913, a pharmacist turned gospel writer by the name of Charles A. Miles was developing some film from his camera. While waiting for the process to complete, he looked down at his Bible that had fallen open to John chapter 20, where he read the story of Mary going to the tomb of Jesus and how her heart was broken because Jesus was not there. But knowing the resurrection story, he picked up his pen and he wrote these words. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the son of God discloses and he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known. I need to tell you that this song uh, it was an indication of the fact that that just because we don't see Jesus doesn't mean he's not there. Just because he uh, was physically, he wasn't physically there, doesn't mean he's not with us. 
Charles Miles understood that if I am in Jesus and Jesus is in me, then he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Uh, and the fact that uh, we understand that, we understand uh, that we must embrace the presence uh, of God the Holy Spirit that Jesus sent when he ascended uh, up into glory to sit on the right side of his Father. In other words, God the Holy Spirit is a ascending blessing from Jesus. Okay, you didn't catch that. I said, I, I, I said, God, the Holy Spirit is not an it, but God is a he. It is a personality. It is a part of the Trinity. I'm simply trying to say that God, the Holy Spirit, is a ascending gift from Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus is saying that in order for you to receive me in you, I got to go sit on the right hand of a side of my father so I can make intercession in the sessions for you uh, but what's gonna get your message to me is God the Holy Spirit and God the Holy Spirit is gonna be in you and so Charles Miles said and he walks with me uh, now I think it's interesting for you to understand and go back to our seventh grade English lessons that the word and uh, uh, it, it comes from a group known as conjunctions as a matter of fact the record is that uh, and is the third most used word of any conjunction uh, that is in the English language uh, we should know that other than uh, to and but uh, and is the third uh, in that line up uh, and a conjunction uh, uh, it joins uh, or connects uh, one uh, uh, word uh, to another one sentence uh, to another one phrase uh, with another in other words it connects something before the word and with something after the word and so that you can get a complete understanding of what and is really talking about I wish I had some help in here. You got to understand that uh, uh, I got problems, but and I got a problem solver. I got some illnesses and I got a doctor uh, who knows all about me. Uh, I got some situations and I got a situation solver. Uh, I got some heartache and I got a heart regulator. Uh, is there anybody in here that understands the and uh, uh, he walks with me and uh, he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. I can sit down right here. That's the whole message right there. You got to understand that regardless of what you're going through, you got an end in your arsenal. Is there anybody in here besides me and Rodney that's got an end in your arsenal? Uh, anybody in here that can say, yeah, I'm struggling and I got somebody to help me struggle. Uh, I'm doing the, the best I can and I got somebody that's going to help me to do better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm simply saying, I'm simply saying the word and is a conjunction that connects what I'm going through with uh, the one who I have that can help me get through. Uh, yeah, the word hand uh, helps me uh, to understand that if I got an hand in my arsenal, it don't matter what the devil throws at me because I got a warrior uh, that is with me each and every step of the way. In our, in, in, in our faith journey, uh, we encounter moments filled with uncertainty, fears, and doubts. However, we are reminded today that we are not alone. Jesus promises that God, the Holy Spirit, our comforter, will be with us, guiding and empowering us, and letting us know how this promise impacts our lives and provides us with the strength we need to navigate life's challenges. I, I just come by to help you understand that uh, you got it in you that will help you get through what you're going through and what you're dealing with. 
I, I said, you got within, if you got Jesus, uh, you got what's within you uh, to help you get through what you're going through. Uh, you see, the problem that we have is that we don't turn to the one on the inside. Uh, I remember, I remember as a little bitty boy uh, at, at 625 East Madison Street where we live, right on the corner of 625 East Madison Street uh, where we live between uh, uh, Hancock and Clay on the corner on the same side of the street was a little store and when the store went out of business uh, uh, this guy came and his wife uh, and uh, he was a chiropractor and what she did was she created a jingle uh, about her husband who was the chiropractor and we all kind of learned the jingle uh, and the jingle uh, uh, that she that she created that we still remember to this to to this to this day uh, is uh, uh, that there's a little man on the inside that this chiropractor uh, listened to a and I'm simply trying to say as he listened to the little man on the inside uh, I learned how to listen to the big man on the inside uh, as he listened to the little man that could adjust my spine I listened to the big man who can adjust my spirit is that anybody in here uh, that don't mind testifying uh, that I'm listening to the big man on the inside. This gospel uh, written by the apostle John emphasizes Christ's deity. Uh, it portrays him uh, as the eternal word made flesh. John's narrative really invites us deeper into Jesus' identity, allowing you and me to peek in at the profound spiritual truths and relationships between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You got to understand that throughout this Gospel of John, Jesus performs miracles. Uh, he teaches in parables uh, and uh, uh, ultimately lays the groundwork uh, for understanding the salvation and eternal life through faith in him. In other words, I just gave you the whole Gospel of John in a nutshell. You got to understand that John lays it out where if you accept Christ, then you got everything uh, that you need. Uh, that's why... Uh, you hear all the time folks saying that and may we say it to the point that it's become cliche but it is the truth as long as I got King Jesus okay y'all didn't catch it because didn't nobody holler uh, as long as I got King Jesus uh, okay you still ain't hollered loud enough uh, as long as I got King Jesus uh, okay you're not getting it uh, when I'm in trouble as long uh, as I got King Jesus uh, when I'm suffering as long uh, as I got King Jesus when I'm going through what I'm going through as long uh, as I got King Jesus when I wake up in the morning as long uh, as I got King Jesus when I'm struggling with my issues as long uh, as I got King Jesus uh, I don't need Uh, the book of John is, is a rich tapestry of belief, invitation, and revelation. Uh, it recounts the life and ministry of Jesus and emphasizes the importance of faith. You got to understand that John's writing uh, captivates us with uh, intimate stories, profound disclosures, and moments that reveal God's heart towards uh, humanity. That's God's heart towards you and me. You see, his goal uh, in his writing of this gospel is clear. Uh, it is to lead people people to believe in Jesus so that they uh, may have life in his name and and that and that's important y'all I'm trying to I'm trying to build this message here it's important that you understand that you got to have life in his name and the reason why that's important is because at the name of Jesus every knee must bow and every tongue must confess and so if every knee 
have to bow and every tongue must confess that it must be something to the name of Jesus. In other words, when I need to call, have you ever had to call on the name of Jesus? Is there anybody in here besides me and Daryl Boyd that had to call, don't fool me now, on the name of Jesus? Has life ever got you a hand that made you look up toward glory and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I can't say nothing else, I can say, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. In, in other words, the Gospel of John aims to reveal Jesus as the Son of God, encouraging whosoever uh, will uh, that believes in him, uh, they can receive eternal life uh, through faith. Now, uh, as we look at these verses that have been tagged uh, to teach us today, uh, uh, the, 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 they... They show Jesus during uh, the Last Supper as he prepares his disciples for the impending crucifixion. And he sought to comfort them in their fears, uh, assuring them that he would continue to be with them though uh, the pre through the presence of the Holy Spirit despite his physical absence. And when I see that, I see that uh, I understand now just a little bit better that when I can't uh, trace him, I can still trust him. Uh, yeah, through that, I, 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 I see just a little bit better uh, when I think I'm all by myself uh, because I have accepted Christ as my Savior. Uh, God is with me everywhere I go. Uh, in other words, uh, it helps me to see and realize that he does walk with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. Is there anybody in here that understands that in most of our situations, just a little talk. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. I said, I said, just a little talk. Okay, y'all not hollering about that. I said, just a little talk with Jesus. It will make everything. Do I have a witness in here? Have you ever had to talk to him? Have you ever had to call his name? And sometimes when I can't call his name, I can't talk a wave uh, has taken the place of my words. When I can't get them out, I'm just mumbling. Thank God for God, the Holy Spirit, who can take my mumble and my grumble and place it at the foot of the altar of God. And God can trans translate my mumble and my grumble into everything that I need. Is there a witness in here? Don't fool me now. Have you called on him? His name is Jesus. I, I said, have you called on him? He is Emmanuel, which means God with us. Uh, have you called the God that is with you each and every day of your life? Jesus, uh, he, he was reassuring his disciples that although he would soon leave, the God, uh, the Holy Spirit, would come to comfort, guide, and strengthen them in their walk of faith. And if he's the same yesterday and today and forevermore, that same God, uh, uh, he's with you and me. Uh, uh, each and every day of our lives, he's walking with us and strengthening us uh, in our faith. Uh, now, I need you to see some things in these verses, and I'm going to hit them and kind of move on right now. Uh, the first thing in verses 16 and 17, and I hope you read from verses 16 down in your leisure. Uh, through verse 31. I kind of touch on all of that uh, as I go through this little message if you help me to preach it. Uh, the first thing uh, that I need you to, to see in this verse uh, is uh, that there is a promise of the Holy Spirit. Uh, 
Yeah, that's in verses 16 and 17. Read them uh, at your leisure because it says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you uh, another helper. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, he ain't gonna leave me, uh, but he's gonna give me another helper. He's gonna give me God the Holy Spirit uh, who's gonna help me along my journey. You see, most of the time that we get in trouble uh, is because we feel like we're out here all by ourselves. Uh, we feel like don't nobody care uh, about our struggle. We feel like don't nobody care about what we're going through. Uh, have you ever felt like you were out here uh, all by yourself? Uh, but let me tell you, child of God, uh, uh, you ain't never been by yourself uh, as long as you had Jesus. Mama wasn't there, but you wasn't by yourself. Uh, Daddy wasn't there, but you wasn't by yourself. Brothers and sisters wasn't there, but you wasn't by yourself. I feel like preaching a little bit. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, you got to understand uh, uh, that the promise uh, of the Holy Spirit. And, and the next thing I see uh, in these verses is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's the promise of the Holy Spirit, but there's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that's in verses 18 through 24. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Uh, that's ministry. I, I won't leave you an orphan. I won't leave you by yourself. I, I want you to know that you too got a family. I want you to know that I'm here uh, to take care of you if you would allow me in your life. Is there anybody in here uh, that will testify uh, that I'm not an orphan uh, because I got Jesus? It don't matter my circumstance. Uh, I got Jesus. It don't matter what I'm working through. Uh, I got Jesus. And thirdly, and thirdly, not the not only the ministry of the Spirit or uh, not only the promise of the Holy Spirit, the ministry uh, of the Holy Spirit, but I, I see I see in here the assurance of peace. Uh, yeah, you see, the problem that many of us have is that we worry about everything. Uh, yeah, everything seems uh, to snatch and pull uh, on us uh, uh, that's going on in our lives. Uh, you got to understand uh, uh, that if you're going to worry, I say it all the time, <laughs> uh, don't pray. But if you're going to pray, uh, uh, then don't worry. I want somebody to catch that. If you're going to worry, uh, then don't pray. And if you're going to pray, uh, then don't uh, worry uh, because uh, uh, if you're going to pray then what it suggests is that you are turning it over to Jesus and if you turn it over to Jesus then, then you got to have the assurance uh, that he will work it out will he do it oh, come on I need some witnesses in here I need some witnesses where he's going to work it out in your life I need somebody to testify uh, that I didn't think I was going to make it, uh, uh, but I turned it over to Jesus, and he worked it out. Uh, I need somebody to testify that I was going down a dark hole, uh, but before I hit the bottom, uh, I turned it over to Jesus, and he worked it out. Uh, I need somebody to go ahead and tell us today uh, uh, that I was headed to hell uh, in my grave, uh, but I turned it over to Jesus. Oh, uh, let me work it out. And he worked it out. Uh, is there witnesses in here? Uh, do you have that story? Uh, is you one that will say, I say, is you, is you one uh, that can testify? He worked it out. Uh, yeah, he worked it out. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't think I was going to get through it, but he worked it out. He worked it out. Uh, and because he worked it out, uh, I got peace uh, in my is there, <laughs> is there anybody in here that says I'm going through, but I still got peace? Yeah, because he says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. And so, and so, and so I'm trying to get through, y'all. I'm trying, okay, give me about five more minutes, huh? I get out of your way. And, and, so, and so the text 
Uh, these verses, they showcase the promise and ministry of the Holy Spirit, reminding us that we receive comfort, guidance, and peace in the midst uh, of life's uncertainties, and we receive that peace through him. In other words, John is telling us that the absence of the Holy Spirit in the lives of those who do not believe leaves them disconnected from God's comfort and peace. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, uh, if Christ is your Savior, uh, you have been endowed with God the Holy Spirit uh, who acts as your comforter and your guide. The Holy Spirit provides you with divine presence and peace and assures you that you are not by yourself. The presence of the Holy Spirit uh, is our constant companion. Uh, that, 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 that's why if you don't show up, I'm still going to be all right. Uh, that, that's why if you don't come through for me, I'm still going to be all right. Because my constant companion is God, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the peace of Christ is my uh, sustaining assurance. Uh, uh, in other words, all hell is breaking loose, but I got peace. Uh, yeah, it's raining in my life, but I still got peace. Uh, it's thundering in my life, but I still uh, got peace. Uh, ain't nothing going right in my life, but I still uh, got peace. Uh, and when I got peace, that suggests that my peace uh, will magnify itself into my joy. And that's why somebody said this joy that I have the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away is there anybody in here that don't mind testifying that this joy that I had the world didn't give it and the, and the world you didn't give it to me you didn't give me my joy uh, but what I love about God is you can't take my joy away either I don't give a What's going on? I almost cussed y'all. What's going on? You can't take my my joy. And and then and then and then John is showing us the, uh, the call to obey. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, that that that's our response to the presence of God. Is that uh, uh, that 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 we are to obey. Yeah, we are to obey, and and so and so these scriptures uh, beg to ask a couple of questions. I'm gonna throw them out here and keep it moving. Uh, the first thing it says, it asks is, what does it mean that God, uh, the Holy Spirit, is our helper? So what what does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. So I'm gonna tell you. It means that God, the Holy Spirit, is our advocate, counselor, and comforter who aids us in our spiritual journey, providing us with guidance and wisdom. Okay, I wish I wish I did. Did I say it too fast? Uh, did I say it too fast? I, I, I said what it means uh, that God the Holy Spirit is our helper. Uh, he helps us uh, uh, because he advocates uh, for us as a counselor uh, and comforts uh, uh, us and, and he aids us on our spiritual journey. Uh, that in turn provides us with guidance and wisdom. You see the problem that we have is that we make missteps uh, before we make the right step. <laughs> Y'all missed that. <sighs> you, you see, what the Holy Spirit will do, it, it will cause you not to make a misstep. <laughs> It'll cause you to make the right step. And sometimes the right step don't seem right to nobody else, and sometimes it don't even seem right to you. <laughs> but if God, the Holy Spirit, guides you, I guarantee you it is the right step. I guarantee you it's going to turn out all right. I guarantee you that if you just hold on to his unchanging hand, trust that he knows what's best for you, it will, it will. It will turn out. The secondly, second, second question, second question uh, that I asked the text is, uh, uh, how does the Holy Spirit dwell in those of us who believe? I thought that was a pretty good question. 
And, and then God said, here's the answer. And the answer is the Holy Spirit takes residence uh, in the hearts when we accept Christ, which gives us what we need to live according to God's will. Uh, yeah, you see, the way that the Holy Spirit dwells uh, in us who believe is because when we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit takes up residence. Okay, okay, you didn't get it. Uh, let me see. Uh, I need to tell you that when you accept Christ and you truly accept Christ as your Savior, uh, then God, the Holy Spirit, takes up residence right then at that very uh, moment that you accept Christ. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, you see, I'm trying to tell you uh, that when you accept Christ and you really accept Christ and God, the Holy Spirit, takes up residence, uh, then you got everything you need right there. You don't have to jump benches. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 you don't have to speak in tongue. Uh, uh, you, you got what you need deposited uh, in, 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 in you. And, and then thirdly, I said, okay, when I looked at these scriptures, I looked at these verses, I, I said, what is the significance of Jesus' peace? You know, there's peace, but then there's Jesus' peace. And, and God says, his peace transcends our circumstances. Offering you and I calm and assurance in the midst of our struggles because we are rooted in the trust of his presence. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, his, his peace, I, I need to say that again, his peace, uh, uh, it overrides uh, my circumstances. Uh, yeah, his peace rides shotgun over my life and because uh, his peace rides shotgun over my life it rides shotgun over my circumstances uh, and, 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 and it gives me assurance uh, uh, not after my struggle is over not before I go into my struggle but it gives me assurance in the midst of my struggle because that's when I need it the most all right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I, I need you to know that verses 16 and 17, uh, and I will pray to the Father, and he will give you another comforter, another helper. That's Jesus emphasizing his continued presence so that you theologians don't say that I didn't exegete the text uh, through the Holy Spirit. Uh, verses 18 through 24, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Uh, that's the assurance of God's ongoing presence uh, and that it is vital uh, that you and I are never abandoned uh, but continuously uh, accompanied by the Holy Spirit. Can I give you one more? That's verses 25 through uh, 31. Uh, uh, the exegetical uh, look at that is the peace that Christ offers is uh, distinct and powerful is transcending uh, human understanding as he promises to guard our hearts uh, and keep us close to him. And so that's the whole message that uh, that that is it. Uh, if you were writing, I hope that you got it written down uh, because uh, the essence of what I'm trying to say is of the promise uh, uh, of his presence is what I need to know. I need to know uh, that his presence is with me and I need to know the peace uh, of Christ. I need to, to know that peace. This world is full of chaos and I need to know the peace of Christ. And lastly, I, I know I need to obey. There's a call for me to obey. That's in 20, verse 21, if you got your Bibles open. You haven't closed your Bibles, have you? Uh, that, that point, who uh, he who has uh, my uh, commandments and keep them, that's a call for me uh, to keep his uh, commandment. And so, <clears throat> I leave you with this uh, uh, today. Number one, I think what we have to do uh, if he's walking with us and talking with us is we got to acknowledge and rely on the Holy Spirit each and every day of our lives. We, we can't just do it today or we can't just do it when we're in trouble or we can't just do it uh, when our situations are, are unfavorable but we uh, got to acknowledge and rely on the Holy Spirit uh, every day of our lives. Uh, next we got to seek Jesus' peace uh, in prayer and trust uh, amidst chaos. In other words uh, you got to pray and if you pray like you ought to pray when situations come you don't necessarily have to pray if you've already got 
got a prayer life where you built up your timber, as the old folks would say. Uh, and then thirdly, uh, uh, acti actively obey uh, his teachings uh, uh, to deepen our relationship with him. And so if I do it like he tells me to do it, uh, then I can come to this point uh, as I get ready uh, to get you out of here. Uh, and when I, when I come to this point, what I want to do is I want to understand what it is that God is doing with me, to me, and through me so that I can celebrate. And the first thing that I celebrate is the promise of the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody in here that's happy uh, that you got the promise of the Holy Spirit? Uh, yeah, yeah, you got the promise that God will not leave you nor forsake you. Uh, the next thing I, I really want to celebrate is the assurance of God's presence. That he's with me every day, uh, although you can't see him on me. And the reason why you can't see him on me is because he's not on me. He's in me. <laughs> and you can't see on the inside. Uh, that, that, that's why your judgment of me is typically wrong about me because you don't know what's inside of me. Yeah, I, I wish I could say it like I feel it. And, 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 and then thirdly, I celebrate uh, the gift of divine guidance. When you don't understand where I'm going, I'm all right with that. When you don't get uh, what's going on and how I'm thinking the way I'm thinking and moving the way I'm moving, I'm all right with that. Uh, simply because uh, uh, you don't understand how God is guiding me. Uh, because God is not guiding me according to your course. God is not guiding me according uh, uh, to your map. God is guiding me according to his uh, GPS system. Uh, and that's why I love the fact that he's guiding me according uh, to his uh, GPS system. Because when I'm headed uh, in the wrong direction, I can hear him say, uh, make a U-turn uh, at the next intersection. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that God has said, uh, make a U-turn uh, at the next intersection uh, so you can turn uh, your life around? I'm going to celebrate God's peace uh, uh, in my life. Uh, and that's why I, uh, I come back uh, to where I started from. Uh, I come back to say, uh, I come to the garden alone. While the dew is still on roses. And the voice I hear Falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy. I said, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. But here's the second part. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet. The birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we shall, as we tell, there none other. But, but wait a minute, wait a minute, but wait a minute. Pa, pa, Paul Jones, Paul Jones, he, he put it this way. He said, I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I, I, I've had some weary days. And... 
some sleepless nights. But when I look around and think things over, all of my good days, I weigh my bad days. And I won't, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds are low. I can hear the Hardly see the road. I ask. The doors of the church are open. Come on. The door is open. Will you come? The door is open. Will you come? Will you come? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord's been good to you. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. None responded, but there is room for many. The door of God's church is always open. Is offering time <clears throat> again. God has blessed us with substance and he loves a cheerful giver. I say every week is not equal giving, but it is equal sacrifice. I'm not in nobody's pocket. I don't know nobody's finances. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what bills you have to do. But what I do know that whatever God puts on your heart to give, then you are blessed by being obedient and giving that. And uh, that's what I love about God. It's not equal giving, but it is equal sacrifice. So whatever he puts on your heart, amen, do it with joy. Do it with gladness. Do it. Don't be ashamed of it, amen, whatever he gives you to give, whatever that is. Y'all know what I say. If God has blessed you with your rent money, amen, pay your rent. Amen. That's what I say. Amen. Because he will give you what he wants you to give. He'll put it on your heart. Just do that. And when you do that, God will bless your life. He'll do it. I'm a witness. Amen. So if he tells you to give a dollar, if that's what he puts on your heart, give that dollar with joy. But if he get, tells you to give 10000 give 10000 with joy. Amen. 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 So let us, let us pray. God, uh, we ask your blessings upon the hands that's holding the offerings that will be given uh, in this worship experience today. God, we ask that you would bless their homes, bless them, bless their families, bless everywhere their feet may trod, everything their hands may touch. Now, God, I pray that you would bless the offering itself, that it can be used for kingdom building here at the Bradgrass Missionary Baptist Church, that we can continue to run up the King's Highway, telling a dying world that there is a reality in serving a true and a living God. We ask all of these blessings in the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everybody on my right and your left, if you would stand and face the outer wall. Everyone on my left and your right, if you stand and face the center out. I don't want to interrupt this wonderful spirit of the gods, but I have to stand up and say thank you, Lord. It may seem trivial a little to you, but for me to go underneath for a night and to be in that room where I don't know that I'm even there, it is a wonderful thing to know that God was there and that he was with me. And he blesses us each and every day, regardless of circumstances. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. As we prepare, we will give as we get ready to exit. Amen. God, how we love you so much, and we thank you for reminding us that you still walk with us, and you talk with us, and you tell us that we are your own. Bless these now, your people, God, as we leave this place, but never from the aside. 
Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, with the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, that it rest you and abide with us now, henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We will see you Wednesday, 12 noon, and Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Amen.